Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. In this video, we will go through the hold down settings available in the software. In this second video of this series, we are going to explore the settings related to hold downs in the ShareWalls program. But first, let's talk about some basics related to hold down deformation as it is an important design consideration for ShearWall design. In general, there are four major sources of deformation that contribute to the vertical deformation of the hold down, which is also referred as DA in O86 clause 11.7.1.2. The first component is the elongation of the hold down device when subjected to uplift forces. This elongation comes primarily from the deformation of the hold down device, including the elongation of the steel rods under tension. The second source of deformation comes from the slippage between the end studs and bolts. The third component is from the shrinkage of the wood floor as a result of moisture content reduction in the service environment. The shrinkage of the floor creates a gap between the hold down bracket and the shear wall bottom plate and therefore contributes to the vertical deformation DA. The last source of deformation is the crushing of the shear wall bottom plate when subjected to bearing. All four components of the hold down deformation can be viewed and edited within the shear walls program. Let me show you how. First, you will have to go to the hold down database, which is accessible by pressing the edit database button located at the bottom of the walls and shear line window or the opening window. To view the properties of a particular hold down device, select it from the drop down menu. In this example, I have selected the Simpson HDU2 SDS 2.5. As you can see, for 76 by 89 mm end studs, the hold down has a maximum capacity of 14.28 kN for Douglas fir end studs and 12.9 kN for SPF end studs. The displacement at maximum capacity is 2.3 mm. Those information were taken directly from hold down testing results from Simpson. When the actual hold down force is less than the maximum capacity, the shear walls program adjusts the displacement proportionally. You can also see that this particular hold down has an anchor bolt with a 19 mm diameter. The maximum length for given displacement is 152.4 mm. This is the length of the anchor rod that was tested by Simpson to determine the displacement of the hold down device. In this case, the 2.3 mm displacement corresponds to the hold down device with a 152.4 mm anchor rod. Depending on the depth of the floor system, a longer anchor rod might be used in construction and therefore a larger hold down elongation might be expected. To accommodate such cases, the program allows users to specify the anchor rod length in the structure input window. When the anchor rod length specified is greater than the maximum length, ShearWalls automatically calculates the extra elongation of the device and this value is reported in the add column of the elongation portion of the hold down displacement table. In the hold down database window, you can always use the interactive help by clicking the question mark and drag it to a specific input field. This helps understand the meaning of each input field if you are not familiar with some inputs. So far, we have covered the elongation component of the hold down deformation. The other three sources of deformation can be viewed and edited in the hold down tab from the design settings. The first parameter is the length subject to shrinkage. This refers to the depth of the wood floor that is between the hold down brackets. The length subject to shrinkage is set to be a portion of the floor depth as input in the structure input view, plus the depth of other wood members subject to shrinkage, such as wall top and bottom plates. As the default, it is 0.925 times the floor depth, plus 114.3 millimeters, which equals to the depth of the bottom plate of the upper level wall plus the double top plates of the lower level wall. The default length can be changed based on the details of your projects. Once the default value is set, 
the length subject to shrinkage is applied to all levels of the building. But you might want to change the value for the bottom level, as the layout might be different from other levels. The length subject to shrinkage input in the structure block window is directly linked to the shrinkage value in the hold down tables. The crushing of the shear wall bottom plate at end stud can also be specified. The 1mm default value comes from the bearing deformation of lumber when loaded to its maximum capacity for perpendicular compression. This value is taken from 086 commentary for clause 6.5.7. As you can see, the 1mm crushing value is also reflected in the crushing component of the hold down displacement table. You can also adjust the bolt hole tolerance which refers to the spacing between drilled hole diameter in the studs and the shank diameter of the horizontal bolts. Typically, the bolt hole tolerance used in hole downs is 1 16th of an inch. If an oversized hole is drilled, the difference between the specified value and 1 16th inch contributes to the hold down deformation DA and is reported in the slippage column of the hold down displacement table. You could also include other sources of hold down deformation such as miscuts and gaps through the other input field. Lastly, the override hold down property section allows you to override hold down displacement, shrinkage or both. If the boxes are checked, Shear walls will use the input value entered here for all hold downs, overriding the values entered in the hold down settings previously discussed. 